Situated near the western edge of the state of Minnesota, the city of Morris is known for its rich history in the agriculture world. It's one of the key drivers of the city's economy, where many of the 5,000 plus residents work in the industry. But the work comes to a grinding halt each Friday night in the fall. 
when 6 o'clock, 6.30 rolls around, the combine stops, the tractor stops, and I'm taking my, my family, my kids, and my wife, and we're going to check out the Morris Tigers because it's, um, it's a part of why we're still here in this community is, is Tiger football. Football is a very unique sport, especially in West Central Minnesota and, and probably throughout the state. But just from my experiences, you know, here, Friday night is football. No questions asked. It is the come to place, the come to time of the year. You know, August hits and everybody starts talking about football. Who's going to be on the line? Who's going to? Who's our running back this year? Who's our quarterback this year? What do they look like? How good are we going to be? Football is important throughout the country, but especially in small towns where the game brings communities together. Nowhere is that more evident than in this rural area where prep action with the Morris Area Chicago Alberta football team is the talk of the town. It's a great way for people to come together on Friday night and, and cheer on a great group of young men. So the recognition and just the, the family feeling of the community welcoming us and knowing who we are is it's top notch. I mean, it really is outstanding. Friday nights, I mean, everybody knows someone associated with the program, either a kid on the team or one of the coaches, and everybody just takes pride in you know, knowing that we've got such a great stadium and a great team, and it's just fun to go and watch and be a part of the experience. So many like businesses and everyone in the community all comes together, and they basically just support the football program as a whole, and it's, it's unreal like how much they help how much support they give us on Friday nights. You see that the stands are just packed. You know, everyone from the community. And it's just so fun to see everyone come together. The Tigers have brought the area plenty to cheer for this season. After finishing the regular season with a 6-1 record, another long postseason run could be in the works again this November. But while the Tigers have achieved success in the football field in 2016, that doesn't mean as much as the impact the sport is making on these young men. Coach Pope and this, they embody what it's like to teach these boys how to become men. Um, they're young, they're enthusiastic, uh, they care. Success on the field is, is fun and you hope to have it. Um, but really, the biggest thing that as a coaching staff I, I try to instill is that we want to have good people in the program. That's something that I think is what we do as a coaching staff, you know, like I said, winning football games is great, but at the end of the day, at the end of the year, at the end of the season, I hope that our kids are the better people when they leave our program than when they came into it. Growing both on and off the field is what takes place each fall in the small town of Morris, Minnesota, for a group of young men. Because of their local support, the Morris Area Chicago Alberta High School football program is the winner of the In the Game Award, sponsored by Innovative Office Solutions. With the entire town supporting and helping to develop these young players, it's no wonder why the program and the kids keep having success. Just the crowd and just the support, and it's, just, it's just great. It's, it's a feeling you don't get really anywhere else, and I think the kids get that feeling now when they come on with the big cat. I think every small town, they hold on to that football team, you know, they. It's, you know, a Friday night lights gathering. It's supporting these, these boys and the boys of fall, and it's a gathering place uh, for the community. It's, it shows what the best we offer. The game of football has been woven into every community in the state of Minnesota. Proudly presented by Innovative Office Solutions, the In the Game Award is your opportunity to win $10,000 for your school's football program. Nominations for the 2017 In the Game Award will be accepted beginning in August 2017 at vikings.com slash in the game. So as you can see from that video, hopefully that you, know, you guys know this and the rest of the state now knows this, is how special the community you've had here in Morris. And that's what's most important to us and the Minnesota Vikings about this board. It's an opportunity for us to come to communities like Morris here and, and how you as a community embrace your football program and how you as a community come together around this sport. Uh, we think that while Minnesota is the state of hockey, uh, football is a very important part of our communities here in Minnesota. And as the Minnesota Vikings organization, that kind of community support and family support uh, that you guys are able to create here is something that we hope 
all communities across the state of Minnesota are able to emulate it. So that's why we wanted to take this opportunity to really come celebrate with you guys here as part of this town takeover. We have a few individuals uh, from your organization that are actually going to be coming to U.S. Bank Stadium uh, this Sunday uh, where they will receive the award at our annual Minnesota Football Honors Awards event. Uh, so we'll have a few of our representatives that will be there for that. Uh, and then really, it's an exciting time for our Vikings organization. We wanted to share that with you as well. Uh, this morning, we obviously built a brand new stadium, U.S. Bank Stadium, uh, which we opened last year. A $1.1 billion stadium, the largest construction project in the history of the state of Minnesota. So we hope that, that all of you will get a chance to come down for that. Uh, on December 1st of last year, uh, we actually had the opportunity to present that award on the field uh, to Morris. So we had some representatives from your community, your athletic director, your head football coach, uh, we're all down there to receive the, the award at that time. Uh, this is also a special time because the Vikings organization were building a brand new practice facility in Egan, Minnesota. Uh, we've been in the same home for a long period of time, and now uh, we're moving to a nice new facility uh, that we're very excited about. And there's actually a high school football stadium there that holds 6,000 uh, people. And we're hoping that as part of that facility, we're going to be more community facing in what we do uh, and be able to bring some Friday Night Lights experiences of our own uh, to that facility in Egan. So we hope to have Morris as part of that in the near future. Uh, that really brings up a lot of the things that we do in the community and why we're here today. Again, we are uh, former legends, our current players are very active in the community and what we do. And it's important for us as an organization, as a large brand in the state of Minnesota, to have a strong community presence to show that we want to give back. Uh, so to help uh, demonstrate that a little bit, uh, we want to show you one other quick video uh, that just shows a little bit more about what the Vikings do and what the community impact means to us. <laughs> to be able to give back and just to be able to be with the community and show support and how they support us every every Sunday and all throughout the season. everywhere I go is just the support, the amount of support. 
the number of lives that get touched by a sport played by so few. And I hope everybody here can see that. And I hope everybody here also realizes that the Vikings are here with their financial support, with the support of everybody else that came with to recognize excellence. You don't get to the NFL, you don't get to play in the NFL, you don't really get to do much coach in the NFL, be a front office person in the NFL, you don't get to, to, to run audio visual and do, do the film work in the NFL for a team unless you're extremely good at what you do. So the Minnesota Vikings wanted to come out here and make sure that everyone here in Morris understands that what you are doing is fantastic. The community that you have is fantastic. Because it's not, it's not so often that you see a community come together for whatever reason. Unfortunately, these days, it's, it's a lot of times communities don't come together unless there's tragedy, unless there's some kind of a challenge. But you guys have come together to support a program, to support the school, and to support each other. And that is very, very important. I know I'm excited to be here. I don't know, how many, how many people here are excited that the Vikings are here? This is a quick question. Uh, well, how many of you guys are excited that the cheerleaders are here? And how many people are excited that Coach Pope is here? three to four, you know, there's only three options. Good job, Coach. Excellent. Um, one quick note for, for everybody in this room, for the students. Um, the introduction, that was great. Uh, I grew up in Joliet, Illinois, just south of Chicago. And in 1990, so almost 20, like 27 years ago, I never thought that I would be able to do all these things. Never thought that I'd be able to play in the NFL, go to Notre Dame, graduate with a degree, um, play the game, do the radio, be a coach, fly with the Blue Angels, go, you know, go up to uh, Camp Ripley and live fire tanks. I mean, I've been able to do a ton, just a ton of great things, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. But keep in mind, first I started out in high school, then I went to college, then I played. And I couldn't play any longer, so I coached. Then I coached, I couldn't coach any longer, so I did something else. The point being is that some might say life has been a success. I say I've succeeded one more time than I've failed. Okay, one of my one of the jokes I always have is the Vikings keep firing me and I and I keep coming back in some other aspect. It's because I love the game and I want to be around it. Everybody in this room, the students, keep in mind every single day whether or not you're opening or closing doors to your future. And don't think it can't happen to you. Don't think it's always somebody else who gets lucky, or it's always somebody else who does these things. It can be anybody in this room. We see companies started for charitable causes, okay? Dream, dream big, and be in the business and opening doors. And the one common theme to all of this is you're gonna fail, it's gonna happen. Happens to everybody. But what is a failure? Failure is just you just learn how not to do something. You go back, you look at it again, and you go at it one more time. Okay? I think in this country, in this day and age, we have some problems with winning and losing. Okay? The losers under the losers when you lose, when people lose, they cry out, they get upset. When you lose, you do what you do in sports, a lot of times like you do in football. You sit back, you look at what you did. You fix, you adjust, and you go back at it again a week later. And you do it over and over again. It doesn't mean you're gonna succeed every single time. So when you don't, you figure out what you did wrong, and you go about it, and you fix it. Then you go at it, and at it, and at it, and then one day you're gonna wake up, and you're gonna win a battle or two. But when you get there, you realize how hard it is to win, how much work it takes to win. And so when you win, you become gracious. You're not waving your finger in the air, I'm number one, I'm number one. We all need to remember that. Every single day is a battle. And you gotta get up, and you gotta win where you can, and where you don't, don't let it stress you out. Right? Don't worry about things that you can't control. And we're here to recognize this community because we know in this room, there's a number of you that are gonna make it out, you're gonna do great things. 
And whether or not that's become a teacher, become a high school football coach like I am, director of development of a school, but whatever way that is, to make an impact on the future, to make an impact on others, that's what's important. Don't ever give up. If you truly believe in something, you will never give up. That's a good litmus test. I want to go do this. Well, I'll go do a lot of things. A couple things go wrong, next thing you know, you're thinking about doing something else. What you truly believe in, what's truly your passion, will get you where you want to go. All right? Don't worry if you don't know exactly what that is right now. So you should be in the business of opening doors, going to class, going to school, learning seeing what's out there. Then when you find out what it is, go after it. Go after it with no regrets. Go after it like nobody else. Okay? So make that promise to yourself. Make that promise to the people in this room. And I guarantee you, 20, 30 years down the road, if I'm lucky enough to come back from once, that we'll see all you guys in, in, in great places, whether it's here or whether it's somewhere else in this country. All right, well, thank you for your time. I've loved my time here in Morris. You have some amazing people here, some amazing coaches. Just use these people, have, you know, learn from them, accept them, take them, learn what you can, okay? And then every day, wake up with a purpose. Every day, wake up for a reason and go do something. Figure out what that is every single day. That's what school's for. Figure out what it is you want to be, what you want to do, and then get after it every single day. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Sorry, I forgot an introduction now. Coach Pope, ladies and gentlemen. just want to say thank you guys all for coming and whether or not you were on the football team or whether you were watching football in the stands or whether you were playing volleyball or swimming in the pool or skating on the ice, whatever it was, everything that you guys do out here is why we got this award. I know we mentioned the word football a whole lot since we've been out here and we got that award because the Vikings play football but we got, we earned the award as a community because of everything that you guys do all the time. It's not because we play football on Friday nights. It's because of what you guys do every day in the community. It's because of what, like, last night at Big Cat, we had over a thousand people out there supporting the town, supporting the community. That's what this award's about. So, give you guys. <laughs> um, and I think what I'm supposed to do is kind of ask some questions. So I, I have a couple questions for you. You can ask this. Well, as well. Yeah, but I got some first ones. That's okay. Right, go ahead. You, get, you drilled me yesterday. I'm standing over here. So I, <laughs> <laughs> they put me under the microphone yesterday on the radio and they, they took it to me a little bit. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Coach Bursich. Yes. Uh, one of the questions that I had, you think you mentioned perseverance and things that you have worked through. Do you have any specific stories of adversity or things that along your ways from being a high school athlete to a high school student going through college at Notre Dame and then through the Vikings and where you're at now. Any specific stories about adversity that would relate to our student body that we could tell them? Wow. Uh, in particular, personally, I know I'd have to go back to 1993. We had, we were playing, uh, we just got done playing Florida State, we beat beaten Florida State, they were number one, we were number two, and we switched the following week to play Boston College. And if we had won that game, we would have uh, been undefeated and gone on probably to play in the bowl game. We didn't have the BCS for the playoffs at that time. And right at the end of the game, I had an opportunity to make an interception of play I should have made, but didn't make it. We ended up losing that game just a few plays later. So that was something that happened to me in front of millions and millions of people watching it on TV. So when you put yourself out there, when you try to go out and do great things, sometimes it's not going to go the right way. Sometimes it's going to happen and, and basically be a nightmare. So you can figure out, do you want to go through life being known for something that you, you didn't do or be something that you did do? So I had two choices. I could either just go in the tank and 
worry about it and cry about it, but I still think about it? Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I got the opportunity to play in the NFL, left it behind me, and just continued to work day in and day out. Um, you realize at some point you can do, you can only do the best that you can. You can't do any more than that. And if that's if you're truly doing your best, then you just gotta, then you can move on and get to the next level. Um, one other question, and uh, you were talking again about well, perseverance and working through things, and that was one of the lessons through athletics. Um, again, not everybody here plays sports, but there's always lessons that we can get through athletics or working with a team. Um, is there something else that stands out about what you've done and some major skills that you've gained through your experiences, whether it's you know working with different types of people or um, like we talked about adversity and working through yeah. that? But, I, I think. One of the things that's, that's great about athletics, because that's been my background, but it could be in anything, anything where you're dealing and working, and the key word is depending upon other people. It's an amazing thing, uh, I know, in college and in the NFL, because when you play a sport, football in particular, you put your well-being in the hands of the guy next to you, who's in the hands of the guy next to him, next to him. And it's an amazing thing when you line up or you go to work, or you do whatever, and you truly depend on the person next to you. And that is just, you don't really care what race they are, you don't care where they're from, you don't care what religion, you, all those things kind of melt away. Because all you care about, and what you care about most, is that that person has your back, and that they know that you have theirs. And I think, in sports, that's a great lesson for everyone. Especially because you can get out there, and you play, and you practice every single week, and you can see it right away. But it's a lesson for everybody here that you need to depend, you need to work, and you need to be accountable to everybody around you. It's not until, it's not until you truly, really 100% depend upon the guy next to you or the lady next to you that a lot of those things just, just melt away. And it's really, really a cool thing. And when you see a community come together like this, that's a perfect example of it. You're coming together for the right reasons. You're coming together for a purpose. You're depending upon each other for important things. Uh, the only great things will come back. Thank you. Um, I, I did want to ask a couple of questions of the media team. Um, all, all you guys here, you, you see the Vikings on TV, and you see um, all the stuff that's been done here in town so far. And there's like a whole bunch of people behind the scenes that I had no idea existed, and I'm sure most of you had no idea existed. But through this experience, we got to meet a great group of people that, um, they, they showed me another world that's involved with sports. Sports is something that I've loved my whole life, and I, um, like Coach Persich, just uh, really learned a lot of lessons through. Um, but... <laughs> come on, come on. You guys put me on the spotlight all the time, come on. <laughs> um, I asked these guys, we had supper on a Tuesday night before everything started on Wednesday, and I asked them the question of, how do you get involved in sports if you're not gonna play? I mean, I, I knew at a pretty young age I wasn't gonna go play in the NFL. I'm pretty small, you guys know that, all right? <laughs> um, and I was lucky enough to get into teaching, and then teaching got me into coaching, which is something I was able to keep doing at uh, State Hall with athletics. Um, but I asked these guys the question, how? How do they get involved with athletics? Because there's a whole world of opportunities out there for someone to be involved with athletics, whether or not it's your favorite thing. Um, there's media and uh, technology stuff, but I guess, how do you do it? Absolutely. Uh, I think we can really quickly give you a, a background, because like I said, I think it's very interesting. Uh, all the different career pathways, as you mentioned, and he is experiencing, he's been a color guy on the radio, he's played, he's coached. He's been in a lot of those different parts. Uh, but there's a whole front office to decide. If you want to work in sports or if you have a passion for sports, there's a lot of ways that you can work in sports that aren't about actually playing on the field or coaching on the field. Uh, myself, I work in community relations. I work in marketing. Uh, but I got my background. I went to school at the University of Iowa, and I studied uh, anthropology and ancient civilizations. I was studying to be an archaeologist. And uh, I worked my way through uh, college in the athletics marketing department. And an opportunity came up with the Minnesota Vikings, and I had a connection uh, there through somebody that was a graduate of the University of Iowa that led to me uh, working here. I deferred my admission to grad school in archaeology, 
and I have been working in professional sports for 11 years now, so uh, I love it, but it's uh, an aspect of it that we get to be involved with this amazing brand that can have such an impact on communities like yours and on communities across the state of Minnesota because of the presence of the Vikings brand. So that's mine, but we have a lot of great others. So we'll start with the cheerleaders because I think it's interesting that our cheerleader group, uh, they are all full-time in some other occupation uh, and have some great backgrounds, so I'll let them share a little bit briefly as well. We both are NBC ambassadors. So cheering is actually not a full-time job by any means. We have a ton of women that are on this team, nurses, teachers, world travelers, or students too. So we do this part-time, but we're so excited we get to come explore different communities. And we're so happy to be here at Morris. Last night was quite a success. We're happy to be and meet a ton of you. And fighting this country is awesome here. We love it. Same as Raquel, I'm a full-time student, and so this is a really part-time job, but I love it because we get to come and meet great people like you guys. And I just want to send another thank you to you all for having us here because it's been a really great experience. And I think you guys are really deserving of this award, so thank you.